Hello everyone, I am back with our old pal, that's right, our old pal, Better Homes and Garden, the magazine, that's right, it's, it's a magazine, remember those? So let's just get into it, today we're going to be drawing family Halloween costumes, starting off with this space themed costume, I mean, I am just tickled by the fact that this kid is just a star, they put this poor kid in a black outfit threw a star on him and called it a day. I mean, that just, their sibling is decked out in an entire spaceman suit. I mean, that's just sad. And the mom, the mom's the galaxy. So like, what, am I gonna draw a lady woman galaxy with like a space person and a bunch of star children? I don't know, but it's gonna be fun. All right, all right, before anyone says anything, yes, I know this character looks exactly like Rosalina from Mario, you know, the space mom with the star babies, Rosalina Luma. You guys saw my inspiration. It was literally a space mom with an actual star child. So when it came to the character design and concept, I thought it would be really cool, obviously, to turn that galaxy dress into an actual galaxy dress. And I just wanted to turn that really sad costume of a black outfit with a star just pasted on it into an actual star child or just an actual star with a face. As far as the design of the character goes, I took all of my inspiration from the actual lady in the magazine, her hairstyle, her face. The pose is very, very basic. Next thing you know, I'm looking at it thinking, my God, this looks just like Rosalina. What have I done? But you know what? Sometimes you draw things that look like other things and you just go for it because you drew the thing and you're not going to redraw it. <laughs> But what is the story of these characters? What is this space lady, the star children, the space guy in the background? What's their story? I wanted to take the people in the magazine and their costumes and take inspiration from them and not exactly redraw them as a family. So even though this is a space mom with her star children, I didn't want the space person in the background to be the child also. Well, I don't know. Now that I'm thinking about it, what I'm going to say actually does make the person their star child. At first I thought maybe the spaceman in the background falls in love with the space lady and there's this weird relationship where a spaceman can't fall in love with actual space. It's a love that will never work and their love is tragic yada yada. And then I drew this spaceman floating in space with no spacecraft in sight, no line to tie them to anything. And I thought, what if this is a spaceman that's lost floating in space and the space lady goes around collecting these lost spacemen and turning them into her star children. They're lost, they die, and she gives them a new life and turns them into her star children. It's kind of messed up, but it's kind of cute, I guess. Hey, if you don't like that story, you can always say the spaceman falls in love with space and he dies a tragic death because you can't fall in love with space. Both stories are very tragic. As you can see, once I started coloring this piece, it was very obvious that it did not look like Rosalina anymore, but I still look at this piece and think, it's Rosalina's great, 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 great grandchild or something because it really just looks like her or maybe it's just all in my head. It's been a while since I've painted space so I was super excited to paint this one and boy oh boy did I go crazy with the stars. The more stars the better. I busted out my Posca pens for the first time in a long time and just sort of went for it. I think this piece is really fun, the story is interesting, and who knew you could find inspiration from goofy family costumes costumes in a magazine. Our next family costume is just a couple. We've got our flower mom dressed like the jolly green giant. I'm sorry, mom. And this little flower kid. This one's really simple, but I feel like we could maybe use our imagination to make it even sillier. So let's get into it. Oh boy, oh boy, this one is my absolute favorite of the three pieces I drew this video and I can't wait to show you guys. So going into the design of these characters, I was looking at the mom at first for the main inspiration. She's the bigger character. So I wanted to build everything around her and then continue on with our child as the secondary character. The mom is covered in leaves. So I was looking at her as a bush or some sort of tree, some sort of living wooden creature. So turning her body 
body into wood was a super simple and very obvious solution. Just throw on some leaves as the dress as it is in her costume. And when I started to look at the flowers on her hair compared to her child, or at least the child in the picture, who knows if it's actually her child? I started to put together the pieces in my head. What might look like a sweet, cute, adorable motherly figure at first actually has a deeper, darker secret. Imagine you're a flower, a flower creature. You're alive. You walk around. You're a flower that walks around. You're going on an adventure in the deep, dark woods, and next thing you know, you're lost and you can't find your way home until you see this sweet, friendly looking wooden lady with her flowery dress and she offers to help you find your way home. She's guiding you. You start walking along the path. She's talking to you. Your worries and fears start to disappear as she makes you feel comfortable and more confident that you're going to make your way home. Next thing you know, she's getting a little closer. Maybe her arm starts to wrap around your shoulder and bam! Your head's cut off and you're dead. And next thing you know, you're just another decoration in her hair, on her clothes. And that is the story of how this adorable family costume went from super adorable to absolutely creepy. But oh my God, she's my favorite. Look how cute these little guys are. I just love these cute little heads that are just cut off and being used as decoration in her hair. Look, all I did was recreate these costumes in a drawing. It's not my fault they put flowers on her hair and on her costume and then also put the kid in a flower costume. I mean, the implications are there. They cut off that child's head and put it on her body. That wasn't me, that was all them. Also, I'm sorry, I took a lot of inspiration from the child in the photo, just kind of looks very confused and horrified as to why they're even there in the photo shoot. The mom's all happy, like, come on, kid, let's smile for the photo. And the kid's like, what am I doing? Can I get my juice box? Anyway, I love the colors in this piece. I love the action, the flow. I love the story. It's super creepy. It's super cute. I was actually coloring this piece on stream over on Twitch and you guys in the chat were like, so are you gonna add some blood splatters to this piece? And as tempting as it was, can I actually say that adding blood to every single one of my pieces might be overdoing it? I can't believe I actually said that. Yes, blood would look amazing on this piece, but I kind of like keeping the innocence. Sometimes not adding blood makes it look even more mysterious because you don't know if it's actually going to go in a bad way, right? Maybe? Nah, she's gonna murder that flower. And for our third and final family costume, we have water themed? Look, we have a mermaid mom. Great, she's beautiful. But you know what? I'm more interested in this child with a shark head. Once again, like the star kid, they gave the poor kid a long sleeve shirt, leggings, and then threw a shark head on him and called it a day. So that's gonna be hysterical. If we ignore the whole part about this being a family, this could be like maybe this diver person hooked up with the mermaid and created this horrifying half human, half shark child. Okay, let's um... <laughs> Let's get into that. Our third and final piece was definitely the most challenging amongst all of them. The cast of characters was certainly interesting. The easiest one to draw was the mermaid mom. I've drawn a few mermaids in my day, so just taking inspiration or rather just redrawing the mom in the image was super easy. She of course is a little bit more fishy looking in my drawing, a little bit less human looking. Okay, that being said, I don't know why I said that as if I didn't just draw a diver and a shark child. I did draw them as I saw them, but I guess the hardest part was coming up with a story or a reason why this cast of characters was even interacting to begin with. I was thinking the shark kid was the mermaid's child, so at first I was thinking maybe this mermaid had a child with the diver, but then when I was drawing them, I really wanted to create this scary, angry mermaid protecting her child shark baby from the diver, so either she had a baby with that 
diver and then had this weird instinct to protect her baby from the diver. Or the other story I was thinking of is that this shark baby went to the surface, made friends with a human, and then they went down into the water to play and the protective mermaid mother got super protective and angry and started to attack the diver. And the diver, the face of the diver is just so innocent and oh my god, what do I even do here? I didn't want to get in trouble. I didn't want to harm anybody. Little shark boy, what should I do? Sh should I be scared for my life? Just looking at the shark child for some sort of assurance that they aren't going to be murdered while the mermaid mom just absolutely screams and rips at them to like, they're gonna be grounded for a month. I actually like that story better. I think it's silly to think that the little shark kid just wanted to have a little play date with a human, but the mermaid mom was super protective and angry. Oh, I should probably talk about the biggest hurdle for me in this drawing was I wanted to suggest that these characters were deep in the water. So I actually started off as you saw already with a wash of blue paint over the entire piece. Obviously I am leaving the background completely white. No background for me. I love drawing my characters in a white void. So it really helps these characters pop off the page and also suggest that they are underwater despite there being no water in the image by just having this deep blue over the entire image. That being said, I didn't think about the rest of the colors and how much that would affect them because I'm a big ding dong. Thankfully, no weirdness happened. I think all the colors turned out amazing. I absolutely love a blue green. So that looks so good to me. I think they look like they're underwater. And at the very end, I added some reflection of some water at the top of the characters that just adds a little bit more of a detail to help you guys understand that they are underwater and not in a white void. And I think this piece turned out really fun. That's definitely an angry protective mermaid mom and her weirdly human shark child. What is even happening? This is a weird one. Hey. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my silly family costume redraws or reimaginations. And an even bigger thank you to my patrons for their monthly support. You guys are the best. If you want early access to these videos, secret sketches, live streams, and more, check out the Patreon link in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.